So a few days ago, AU5 created the video, what he called the Ultra Comp, and he created some type of filter inside of Ableton Live for the combination of devices like a flanger, a phaser, and a frequency shifter. And I want to recreate this in this video inside of Bitwig Studio because some people in the Bitwig Reddit community want to know how it works. So I want to show you this and also how it sounds because this is here how it sounds. So it has this kind of spectral filtering sound to it and it creates this moiré pattern inside of the uh, spectrum analyzer here. So you can see he tried to come up with a nice combination of different devices. So he starts by creating a flanger here by using two delays. Then he goes into a set of phaser flangers here that are combined phase inverted to extract basically the all-pass behavior. And then at the end he uses a, phase, a frequency shifter to create on top of that some kind of shepherd tone effect. Um, so that's basically it. Um, this part here in the middle with the face flipped phasers, um, we don't need to do because we have all pass modules inside of the grid. So I want to show you this here, how it looks like inside of Bitwig Studio. And the best way to explain this is probably to use the EQ, uh, EQ curve analyzer here using two of them. So we can analyze what's going on inside of the FX grid. So you can see I have already here a preset for this. Okay, so here we just pass through the audio uh, unprocessed and we want to use here an RPAS device or RPAS module. And then we show the face here and you can see the frequency spectrum is basically untouched, so nothing happens to the frequency here. It's completely flat. That's why it's, why it's called R pass, right? It passes through all the frequencies. But it changes here the phase relationship in the higher frequencies, right? And you can change where it changes the phase or delays the phase with this frequency knob here. So it basically delays here the phase by let's say the wavelength of this frequency and on different frequencies by different amounts. And when you combine this now with the dry signal, when we bring down here the mix knob to let's say 50%, you can see we change now also here the frequency distribution. We kind of create a low pass filter. So I'll pass mixed with the dry signal gives you more or less like a low pass filter. So that's it. Um, this is basically how filters are created. So when we increase now here the poles to two poles, you can see we create now a notch. Uh, maybe suggest here another. Um, and you can see here the phase is basically inverted at this position at this frequency here. So we can create notches with this, right? If we combine this here with a, another module, we create another notch and another one and another one right so we can create with these combinations of all pass filters here some kind of notch filter and when we try and listen to this here maybe with a test tone let's use here a saw you can also hear it Maybe with white noise. So this is kind of how it works. And um, yeah, to recreate basically now this device in the FX grid, I want to call up here my preset. Um, you can see here uh, I'm using a lot of Alpas modules, actually 50. Yeah, 50 devices. You can use more if you want to, but the more you add, the more CPU you use, right? And um, I think the effect doesn't get stronger if you use more. 
so here what I do is basically I recreate the flanger by using two delays. They have at least some kind of minimal delay because the delay, the minimum delay is limited by the uh, sample size or the sample buffer um, here in the audio settings. If you go to settings and audio, right, we have here at least 10 milliseconds delay uh, for every delay. So I think you need to combine two um, to actually uh, recreate this behavior. I don't think this goes down to zero milliseconds here. I'm not sure, maybe it is. Um, so I recreated basically a flanger here by just splitting the signal into two signals and then you can delay one signal and you create basically a, a flanger with this. And then one signal goes into this battery of all pass filters here, creating additional notches. And then we just blend everything together here, basically the dry signal and the del delayed signal and the dispersal signal blended together. Then we increase here a bit of the volume and then we go out into the post FX box where we have here a frequency shifter and this one shifts the frequency by, uh, let's say, let's, let's go for 10 Hertz here. I think this, this is the perfect range, 10 Hertz. And then we can shift it up or down, right? So this is how it sounds now. Yeah, I'll start with a saw. So we can change it to shift. So we create this shepherd tone effect. We can also change it the frequency of the dispersers. We can also change it out the flanger, which is the delay here. Maybe that's not enough here. Maybe the delay is a bit longer like this. And maybe we do a second macro button here to delay here this signal. Let's delay is actually actually by the same amount, 0 0.5. This one also 0 0.5. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Yeah, the frequency shifter of Bitwig does also feature here this left thing, which means basically if you turn this to the right, we shift the frequencies on the right side, on the right channel, a bit different or in the positive range and on the left side in the negative range. So we can create some kind of stereo effect with this. So this is here the spread knob, which kind of spreads the notches a bit apart to get you also a different effect. Um, so then you can modulate everything if you want to. Let's call this here flange two and bring this in there. So you can modulate everything if you want to. Um, you can bring in some random modulators here and just, uh, I don't know, modulate here the frequency. Um, Modulate maybe here the shift and bring this here and then uh, maybe modulate here the flange. I don't know how this sounds. But you get the idea, right? So this creates these type of filters here. Maybe let's use your white noise. So kind of interesting for color-based producers for some reason, but that's that's how it is, right? 
Um, if you want to increase the effect, you can just duplicate here this whole thing multiple times and yeah, it's amplified more or less. Let's actually uh, move this here and double it. But you can also see here the CPU goes weird, all right, at some certain points. Okay, so this is basically the Ultracom for you here inside of Bitwig Studio. Uh, but there's another thing I want to show you. Instead of using this device here, you can also use the frequency split of Bitwig Studio, which basically does the same thing. Uh, we get here uh, multiple bands and we can increase the splits, right? Something like this, and then say we want to notch out certain things. Let's say here the, the blue one, right? And then... Kind of the same effect. And this gives you basically the, um, uh, the benefit that it's spectral based. It's not like it doesn't, you know, shifts the phase around. It's straightforward. It doesn't use your CPU too much. And it's exactly, um, it's exactly what the Ultracom does as a native, native device. So you can just use the frequency split. And on top of that, you can put here in these FX boxes, maybe flangers, um, or phase shifters or frequency shifters or whatever you want to do. You can put in these uh, little boxes here and create another type of filter, right? So you don't need to do this here basically the manual way inside of the uh, grid. But I have to admit here, using this uh, Alpass kind of uh, method, you get some type of different sound. You get a different sound, of course. So if you change the process, you get a different type of sound. You, maybe you like this type of sound more than this one, uh, but this kind of device does more or less like the same thing. I also want to show you here uh, how it looks like in the EQ curve analyzer. Um, let's put this on, let's turn this off, and then maybe use here the frequency shifter, suggest. You can see here basically these Alpass um, modules here create a lot of different notches across the frequency spectrum and we can shift this around and also the spread looks like this. It's kind of changes how certain frequencies are, um, how far apart they are, right? So this is how it works. Okay, so I put this uh, device in the description below. You can try it out. I also put the link to the AU5 video in the description below so you can check it out. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time and bye.